Are we live? Hi, welcome to day 23 of our COVID chats and we have with us Travis, a local business owner. Hi Travis, nice to have you with us. Hi Joe. hi Sue. Right, Travis, we've seen your lovely clip on Facebook giving some advice and your years of wisdom to business owners and it was heartfelt and it was spiritual and it was lovely. So could you just tell us where you are um, on day 23 in business and what you think our plans are, that where we need to set plans for going forward to get out of this situation that we're in? Um, thanks for your kind introduction and um thank you for um for having me on um where i'm at personally right now is i'm starting to get a little bit excited um i i feel like as a small business owner i've been sitting on the sidelines and watching um you know, our amazing health workers and supermarket workers and emergency services all being out out on the field playing their part and um very soon, and I don't know when, um, it'll be my role and other small businesses' role to to step out and and play our part in um, caring for society. And um, so that's I, right now. I'm feeling a bit excited, um, and I'm also feeling um, some fear because I keep having to remind myself that um, it won't be business as normal. Everything has changed in the last you know month or so so um yeah excitement and fear um on day 23 um that's where i'm at yeah and in your first recording that you've done travis you talk beautifully about that fear you have a lovely sense of integrity and being able to be vulnerable in fear and you talk us through four different steps that worked for you in trying to overcome fear of the future fear of it, what would you do in terms of employing staff? Do you let staff go? Where's your business go going to move to, shift to? What is it going to translate into? Is it going to survive? Can you just talk us through those four steps that empowered you? <laughs> I don't remember them. So <laughs> can I remind I, you? No, no. I can talk to. I can talk to where I guess you know right now. Um, so right now. Um, I know that fear has its place. You know, it's a it's a useful emotion, um, and and so I've I observed that I've got it, and then I think, hey, what well, what's the message it's trying to send to me, and what am I trying to do here? Um, so, in this sense, it's it's the good part of it is it's waking me up to things have changed, and um, it's uh, I guess a a desire to protect. Um, where I don't want it to take me is to protect really small, so just just myself and my family, um, and and not go beyond uh, my family to you know, my staff, to my um, suppliers, to my customers, and to the community. Um, so um, the fear is good in that it's 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 bringing up my desire to I guess be safe and protect. Um, but not so good if it has me become very insular and inward looking. Um, and and um, and I often remind myself in order to be courageous, I must first be fearful because um, it's only you can only be courageous and brave if if there's fear to move through. So um, that's my relationship today with fear is. Um, Really, I don't know how things are going to look or when I'm going to open my doors. Um, yeah, but I'm pretty excited and it's my intention to be um, generous and kind and outward looking when I do when I do open. I think that's a lovely message because fear brings up certain connotations for people, but actually fear can be really healthy, like you say. How can we be mm -hmm. courageous if we don't know what fear is? Because the, the two go hand in hand. And you said yeah. something earlier to us, when we were chatting and your words were in business now you feel like people need to be brave and we need to care beyond ourselves and i really like that it was really heartfelt and i think you're right going forward and actually it's what we should have been doing anyway businesses need to be brave and they need to care outwardly they need to care about their customers their suppliers their staff and by the sound of it that's in the direction that you're going yeah, I, I think what I said, or something I said in my first talk that I'm really present to in 
in business, there's a couple of equities. Um, there's, you know, there's your financial equities, your, your, um, how much money do you have? How much um, debt do you have available, et cetera? So that sort of financial equity. Um, but in business and in life, there's another equity. And that is, um, that is I guess, my, my mana, my, my standing, um, all of my relationships. You know, the sum of all my relationships would probably sum up my equity as a, as a man or as a person. And um, so... Right now, my my financial equity is going wow, <laughs> um, but I but I can build my um, personal equity by um, kindness. I think um, the I, I love the Maori term uh, manaki tanga, um, and for me personally, that kind of speaks to my own mana or essence and uh, is enhanced if I continue to have the discipline of care for the mana of anybody who's in front of me. Um, so be they anybody at, at, at any level or um, vulnerability or misfortune, um, my own mana is enhanced if I always have the discipline to care for who's standing in front of me. Yeah. And I think that's really key, isn't it? Whether we're in business or listeners coming from different situations, to remain in integrity, to remain in authenticity, and to remain in the simplicity of the situation that we're in, because our listeners will be in very complex, very different situations. And I think, you know, so many struggles out there, and you speak beautifully about, you also, when you talk about fear, you talk about there's a, there's a period of time between the stimulus, the fear, and the response that we make to it. And you yep. talk about that space in the middle, which is really lovely. And you also have a, a great quote from Viktor Frankl, who says, in the space is our power to choose our emotional response. And in that response lies our of freedom. And whether we're at home right now in lockdown, whether we're an essential worker out there, we've got that space between the fear and our response. And it's what we do in the middle, isn't it? It's what we choose to do with that that's really important. Yeah. And I think we wake, you know, we wake up some days where we might be a bit agitated or irritated or grumpy, and um, and then other days we 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 wake up and that space between stimulus and response is really big, um, and we just show compassion for those around us, patience, grace, all of those all of those good words, um, and. You know, this is a time of pressure and crisis where it would be easy for that space to get really small or not exist as we're worried about our own um, well-being and, and those dear to us. And um, <coughs> it'll take a lot of discipline and strength to grow that, to keep that patience. Um, and you know, people, people grow that in different ways. I think it's part of maturing is to grow that space. Um, you know, people use meditation or nature, exercise, um, music, there's uh, animals, <laughs> um, whatever their religious beliefs are. There's, lot, there's lots of different ways and unique ways to grow that space. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm aware for myself, um, just observing my emotional responses and and you know, breathing and going, okay, chill, show some compassion. You don't know what's going on for that person. Yes, they haven't behaved in a good way, but um, you know, respond in the way that I aspire to be, I guess, as a person. Yeah. But it's not always easy though, is it? Because you know, when you're in that place of pain or the fear of losing a business, you're in a place of yes. terror it's actually, it can be really bleak. It can be black and it can be dark. It can be overwhelming in the sense you can wake up in the morning with depression and not wanting to get out of bed, not want to face it. So what would you say to listeners who are in that place where they see that space and they actually can't see the hope the other side of it? How do you get to that place where you can just breathe and just do one yeah. moment at a time? That's such, such a hard thing to do. Yes, it's for me that... that um that whole emotional response is, it's like physical exercise. It takes discipline and practice and effort. Um, some of the things I do is, um, I, unlike a lot of men and particularly, I mean, ex, 
well, I, I won't judge it. I'm like a lot of men. Um, I'm, I'm quite communicative and prepared to be vulnerable with my mates. So I will tell them that I'm upset about something or worried about something. And uh, I think the, you know, the great paradox for men is, uh, you know, and I still have this story that, um, that making myself vulnerable makes me less manly but actually how it lands with the person that I'm making myself vulnerable to is they feel um, trusted, they feel closer to me, they feel empathetic. Um, but it takes immense courage for me to still overcome all of that conditioning as a man um, that I shouldn't share or communicate. Um, and I still, there's, I, I still feel there's beautiful, there's, there's beauty in men's quietness and stoicism and, and um, sucking it up and getting on with it. So there's, there's, there's immense beauty in that power as well. But, you know, perhaps consider as a business person um, and, and as a man, um, yes, when all of those things are coming at you, you know, a problem shared is a problem halved. And so, you know, perhaps um, as business owners, you're connecting with people right now um, get into some sort of ritual or routine of checking in with each other daily or weekly or every couple of days. What, you know, how are things going with you? Um, you know, what, are, what have been your highs and lows for the week? What have been your challenges? Um, and that practice may provide some comfort and solace and hope. Um, yeah. I that's think that's a beautiful, beautiful message, especially for men, because, you know, us women, as and it's a generalization, obviously, but as women are talkers, we like to yap a lot and we, you know, yeah. we have girlfriends and it's what we do, whereas men go to the pub and they talk about sport and whatever. And it's never really been um, encouraged for them to be open and to talk because you're right. There is that stigma there that it becomes less of a man. And I just think you're right. There is there's beauty in stoicism, but there's also beauty in sharing and being vulnerable. And actually we don't, well, men don't feel less of a man when they're, sharing they act, it actually brings out their caring nature and we all have that masculine feminine energy as well and it just brings the the yin and the yang to the table doesn't it and i think yeah. you know we we started this podcast to well, our main you know our main driving force was to try and reduce teen suicide statistics here in new zealand but also there is that teen there's that um there's the amount of suicides within the male um side of things as well and it's shocking and i think if men were encouraged from a young age to share then that can kind of lessen some of the burden that they carry around on their shoulders. Because, you know, as men as well, you know, often they're the breadwinners, they go out to work while their wife stays at home. There's a lot of going on. So if you can share either yeah. in business or in pleasure, I think it's yeah. really important. And, and if you can't share because that's not your way and, that, and that's okay. I think um, even just showing up, um, I remember um, a while back, um, a friend who had quite a high position in the education system rang one Tuesday night and said, oh, do you want to have a beer? And I said, uh, yeah. And my wife said to me when I got off the phone, she said, um, who was that? And I said, it was such and such. And he's asked for a beer. And she said, you better go. You know, you're not having a beer. eh?" I said, yeah, I know. It'll probably be a cup of coffee. Um, but, and when we got together, we didn't share, but I showed up. And he had the courage to go, do you want a beer? Which he just wanted to get. <laughs> yeah, he just he just wanted a connection, I think. So, um, you know, yes, we could encourage men to share, but but it may not be right for them right now. So just just showing up, um, you know, there's, there's immense um, enjoyment and comfort from male friends getting together and being shallow and giving each other a bit of stick. And um, I certainly really enjoy, enjoy that. Um, mm. And um, my wife rolls her eyes, but knows that it's, <laughs> that it's good for me. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause there's horses for courses, isn't there? And we need yeah. that aspect. We need that um, self deprecating or taking the mickey out of each other. Cause that's what brings us to life. It's, it's joyful. It's fun. But yeah, showing up is great. And your earlier message was great as well, saying, you know, you you admit yourself, it takes personal discipline and it takes practice to keep showing up, to keep being vulnerable, because these things aren't easy. So if no. we can get these baby steps, as you say, if the baby step is just showing up, 
great. Yes. Pat yourself on the back, back for that. No, you don't have to pour your heart out straight away. But if you can just say one sentence here and there, just try it. Step, pop, pop yep. your tub in the water and see how it feels. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I, something I'm really present to from this conversation for, for business owners is maybe, um, and it's 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 almost a little a little bit like with you know you're talking about. Um, I know you've got a passion for um, youth and and feel the pain and hurt of suicide. Something I, I've been involved in, I guess, men's community work for years, and something that I'm aware of is it's not just um, it's not just about saying you can talk to me, you can reach out, I'm here for you. You actually need to create the practices, rituals, and disciplines that get you together. So um, you know, I have those um, in my life. So. Um, you know, I have mates that I call, you know, we know we call each other regularly. Um, I, I sit with a group of guys um, on every Tuesday night and we talk about things. Um, um, uh, Mark's one of those guys. I think you had him on, a, on an interview recently, Mark Mandy. Yeah. What a beautiful man. Um, so, so, and I've said this to my male friends before, it's not enough to say, oh, you can reach out, you can talk to me. Actually, yeah, there's been a um. Oops, there was a um. I think it was a Harvard study on happiness, and one of the things they looked at for for men is um, one of the <laughs> the key indicator of um, or one of the key indicators of stress, high BMI, and dying twenty two percent earlier was men who did not keep in touch with their male friends, and. That is because um, there's been, as societies change, men have really valued themselves in their vocation and as fathers. And those are, those are honourable. Um, but they've done it to the detriment where they almost feel guilty about going out and having a weekly beer with their, with their mates. And, you know, they, they think that that is the, at the cost of fatherhood or at the cost of their their professional vocation where actually it's it's mutually beneficial um their mental health by catching up with their male friends um as that study from harvard has shown that you know they live 22 percent longer they have lower stress levels and 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 better bmi um simply by catching up with their mates much once a week Sorry, I cut off on a tangent there. That's okay. No, it's great. Because I think also your message there is that you need to be proactive and that takes courage, doesn't it? If you're sitting at home and you're not feeling connected, you need to yep. be proactive. You need to do something about it. You need to pick up the phone. You need to send an email. You need to gather a group together. And I say that to my teenage boys, you know, when they say, oh, if I, if I phone so-and-so, they might not want to see me. And I said, well, if, if they phone you, would you want to go out tonight to the cinema? And they say, yes, absolutely. So I say, well, it's exactly the same. You've got to be proactive. Yep. It's interesting. So what I, what I would say to your teenage boys is um hey why don't you have a day a week where you have three mates around and you cook or why don't you have um what what about on sunday afternoons um is your so so create the ritual rather than the you know and i for i've got a teenage boy man creature through the wall <laughs> over there um rather than you know get out of the house and see your mates da, 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 it's good for you um if if we can have them create that um, that ritual that they love each week, you know, off to the cricket nets, or yeah, this is the afternoon where I kick a ball around with my mates, or here's where we goof around in in Sue's kitchen and and make a hell of a mess of it, but we cook a you know our dinner that night. So it's the it's the ritual that then doesn't require the courage and the discipline to reach out because you've made it a ritual of having you know healthy connection in your life yeah. um, and rituals again coming back to business are really important i mean you said on your i listened yesterday to your last little chat that you've done which i just love and you talk about making decisions beyond your personal self-interest for the greater interest of others and you talk about self-sacrifice but also to make conscious decisions about other people and to look after your staff for example in your business we need to take care of ourselves it always comes yep. back to taking care of ourselves doesn't it because we need to be selfish about ourselves in order to be able to be able to put ourselves out there completely yeah 
there's a there's a there's a bit of a paradox there which I think I can sit with, and that is um, I can't care for others unless I care for myself. Yeah. But I think um, I think Tolstoy has a quote that um, man finds true happiness in serving in rendering service to his neighbour, and he finds it there because it honours the divine connection between them, or, or something like that. Yeah. And what what I love about that is it speaks to um, yes, I need to care for myself. But I'm a social. I'm a social animal. You know, humans are social animals, and I experience that connection with others when I'm of service to them. So, it's not. Um, it's. It's not naive to actually go beyond myself in a business sense and help people. Um, it's actually really, really good for my own happiness and well-being. You know that you know man finds true happiness. That Tolstoy um, uh, quote. Um, and from a business sense, um, you know my experience in a variety of businesses is what I think may be a short-term bit of generosity on my part, and it's it's not doing it for anything in return. It's doing it because it's the right thing to do inevitably um, humbles me with what comes back my way. It, it's, you know, it's incredible. I can think of some instances really recently that have almost brought tears to my eyes of generosity that have come back to me um, because some time back I just did what I thought was the right thing in the moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that's the key message to our listeners in business is that true leadership comes by serving others and yep. empowering them in their place of work or identity through having done our own work ourselves and i love it when we asked for a bio about you to come onto the podcast the first thing you said was i love my life as it is which clearly means you are on that personal journey to explore who you are and find connect with that divine love and when we connect with it then we can empower others through leadership through mentoring which is what we're all about yeah, I've worked with a lot of leaders, and um, and I think that the the most significant part of leadership is firstly to really, really get inside yourself and um, take a look at all of those um, all of those things you don't necessarily want to take a look at. You know, why do I react or respond this way in this situation? Um, yeah, where's that from? What's that about? Um, how do I Okay, now that I know that, how can I respond differently in the future? Yeah. Um, how can I always have the discipline of of when somebody behaves poorly to think to myself, <laughs> not to go immediately into judgment of you know, oh they're a dick, <laughs> but to uh, to uh, go go gee, I wonder what's going on for them that they might behave that way. Um, and it's incredible with staff members when they behave in a way that is not enriching and and it's incredible when you say to them hey are you okay because this is what i know about you this is what i you know, like about you da 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 what just happened then or what happened yesterday um is kind of landed a bit differently to me are you okay and rather than you know why did you do that why did you break that um you can't do that and it's just as soon as you say are you okay they, then it's just like oh yeah, I didn't want to share, but I've got all this stuff going on and that's why I was short with that person and yelled at them or or, or snapped at that customer or da-da-da and you go, yeah. So how you behave has to be congruent with who you are. You're talking about authenticity, you're talking about integrity, you're talking about remaining in truth. What is true for you in that moment? And I think that's coming back to business again. What is true for you business owners right now with the circumstances that you face in the situation that you're in what remains true to you in how you can proceed and move forward from here? Good question, Sue. Um, one thing I'd invite business owners to consider, which I've been thinking, is why do I do the business that I do? Um, you know, what is what is the part of it that brings me a lot of happiness and um, pleasure? Um, so my business is a hospitality business, and um, as probably as you've gauged in this conversation, I love I love people. So why wouldn't I have a business that brings people together? So um, you know, talking to um, you know, 
you were I was watching your talk with Mark the other day, and I could just see him light up when he talked about those moments where he saw teenagers through um, the adventure experience that he gave them. Teenagers all of a sudden get this this air of self confidence and resilience and self belief, and um, and um, yeah, so. In this time of crisis, you know, for Mark to return back to what um, his calling is, for me to go, well, actually, I love bringing to people together. I do, it in, um, I do it in work, I do it in charity, I do it in social organizations. That's my, that's my gig. I just love um, loving connection. And so for any business owner, you know, if you're a creative or if you're um, if you're, you know, if you're a mechanic or, um, you know, what, um, maybe breathe deeply and, and get back in touch with what it is you love about your business and use that as the, the fuel, the inspiration, the, um, I guess the, almost the, the rock to hold on to in the storm, um, you know, the money, but, um, you know, First, we've got to survive. So, you know, be, be talking to your bank, be talking to your landlord, uh, be talking to your staff, be talking to your suppliers and within your means, work that puzzle out and then focus on doing what you love and get back to what you love. And that'll, yeah. I think it's a lovely message because anything we need to do in life, we need to find out what our why is, why we're we doing it. Because yeah. um, that's, you're right, that is our drive and force that shows where our passion is. And so now... Yeah. You're right. If business owners are sitting at home now, go back to the basics because we can get caught up in all of those financial things, making a profit, doing our KPIs, blah, 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 you know, all of that business jargon. But actually go back to the basics. Find out what is your why. Um, with this hospitality business, I've got, um, I sold a business a while back and, um, and, um, my kids were older and my wife and I decided that I was just going to do some consulting some leadership work and that sort of thing and then this new business this opportunity came up and my wife was like and um and you know presented all the financials to her and you know she cleverly you know picked holes and all of that and then she said to me Travis are you excited and I said <laughs> yes, okay and you know and one you know one of the reasons I love her so much is she set aside her own fear to allow me to pursue my excitement but she also had the wisdom to know that it was that excitement and that enthusiasm in starting a new business that, which is basically almost what we're doing when we, when we go to level three and level two, we're starting a new business. Um, it's the, it's the enthusiasm and excitement um, that will get us through because right now I've spreadsheeted how everything might look and there'll be so much that'll be wrong. Um, and, and that's okay. Um, you know, in my, in my old army days, it was like um, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. And in a business sense, when I opened my last business, I said to my team, yeah, no, no business plan will, will survive first interaction with the customer. And sure enough, we'd made a whole lot of, well, I'd made a whole lot of bad assumptions, but most of my assumptions were really, really good. And that's what will happen in a week or two or three or four's time when, as a hospital business, I can't see me probably opening for at least a month because we're all about social contact and yeah. we, need to, we need to wait. But, yeah, so, yeah, business owners, um, um, remember why you love what you're doing um, and um, remember that you've started a business before, you've done this before, you and I have done this before. Um, um, so yeah, remember your passion, remember you've done it before and, and go in there and, you know, get your social connections of, of, um, friends who you trust and love, um, who you can catch up with regularly and what are your highs? What are your lows? You know, what's scaring you? What's exciting you? Um, mm. Oh, thank you so much. I think, you know, we could actually talk to you for hours cause it's so interesting, but I think we will leave our listeners on them final points. Thank you for your last message. And thank you for all of your time today. And thank you for all you're doing, ladies. It's amazing. I, I just loved watching your interview with, with my friend, Mark, who I thought I knew well and learned even more about. Um, um, your ability to um, 
listen, care, extract um, is, yeah, is beautiful. Thank you. Well, we also love what we do. We love connecting people and hearing real stories, putting the message out there that nobody's got a perfect life and how do we work through the situations that we face. So thank you so much for sharing your, your incredible wisdom, excitement and enthusiasm with us today. Thanks, Travis. See ya. Look forward to having a drink thank after you. this. <laughs>